What is up guys, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark and welcome to some more r slash am I the butthole. If you'd like to skip the initial waffle, you know, timestamps are in the description and along the timeline below. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe and maybe that notification bell too. Yesterday we had another two members on YouTube. Oh my word, you guys, I, I swear, you're just blowing me away. We had Fuse, Stefan Gino, and Crafty Inc. Thank you so, so much for becoming members. It really does mean the world to me. And for everyone for just taking the time to sit there and waste your time watching my videos is absolutely crazy to me. Yesterday, if you was on Twitter, you would have seen, I was said I was laying down, drinking a beer. I was a bit down yesterday, had a bit of a down moment. You know, I just visited my dad and he doesn't look great at all. And I'm sorry to keep bringing up my, this, <laughs> I'm sorry to keep bringing up, you know, the depressive stuff about my dad but like I like to talk to you guys like almost like family you know because a lot of you you are just so so supportive and I was I was I was talking to people on Twitter and then I was lurking on discord I wasn't talking yesterday I didn't really feel much up to it but I was watching you guys talk to each other and respond to each other and so wholesome then I was going to YouTube comments and I get over 300 comments a day and it's just amazing to hear from you guys and some of you the, the way you are supportive towards things towards me towards each other oh, and I just think if the world was like this it'd be so much of a better place and yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this, but thank you so, so much for being here. You are really, truly appreciated. And with that being said, let's get in to today's stories. Much love, guys. Our first story is from a deleted user. You know it's going to be spicy when they're deleted already. <laughs> I'm I the arse off for kicking out my sister after she sabotaged a meeting with a fertility clinic. Eight years ago, my 29 female sister, 32 female, got pregnant. The father wasn't involved and my sister didn't want the baby, but she also couldn't bring herself to terminate or adopt out to strangers. She approached me and my now ex-husband and asked if we would be willing to adopt her child. We weren't sure as we were concerned this would lead to issues down the line, but my sister insisted that it wouldn't, so we ultimately agreed. Before Lucy was a year old, my husband left us both because my sister lied about Lucy's father. When Lucy was four, I got together with my wife and we married last year. My sister has said that seeing me and my wife with Lucy, who is now seven, confirms to her that she made the right decision. When I first adopted Lucy, my husband and I told my sister that we wanted multiple children, which she said she was fine with at the time. But now my wife and I are looking into our options and my sister objects. My sister has been staying with us since July because her boyfriend kicked her out. She keeps asking Lucy if she's sure she wants siblings. Lucy has said that she does and telling us she's worried we won't be able to give Lucy what she needs and then today happens. We had an online consultation with a fertility clinic to talk about sperm donation. We told my sister about it and asked her to keep an eye on Lucy while we talked. The Wi-Fi went randomly on and off three times during the session, booting us out of the call each time. The third time, my wife went to check it and saw my sister holding the power cord and Lucy trying to plug it back in. Lucy saw my wife and said, Auntie keeps turning the Wi-Fi off. Wife plugged it back in, but we could no longer get into the session. And we got an email from the doctor saying that if the Wi-Fi is going to be this bad, then maybe we should try a more local clinic as we can't do online consultations. When we confronted my sister, she admitted that she wants Lucy to be an only child. So she has 100% of our undivided attention and then said in a sarcastic tone, forgive me for only wanting what's best for my daughter to which we responded that Lucy isn't her daughter. Things escalated until I said that my sister should go stay with our parents and my wife drove her to their place. Since leaving a few hours ago, she's apologized and begged to come back. And my parents have also asked me to take her back, but I've refused. They've all called me an asshole for kicking my own sister out after one argument, because now she's unable to get to work, no car and too far to walk. And she's back in her childhood room. While at our place, she has a studio to herself behind the house. Now, I'm not sure because I've no, I never know too much about adoption and fertility, fertility clinics and all that kind of thing. So please do correct me if I sound wrong here. But my initial thoughts that popped into my head when I, when I was reading this, it sort of thought like, as soon as they adopted the baby, she's not your daughter anymore. And you drop down a couple of tiers or maybe all the tiers in the decision making levels, you know, and you certainly don't get to control them having other kids 
So to sabotage that call, yes, I would think I would have done exactly the same and kicked her out. And I think I'd want her to be distancing, distancing herself a bit because she sounds like she's sort of almost escalating back up to wanting her daughter back. But I might be totally wrong there. But let's have a look at the comments below and hopefully I might get a bit educated. <laughs> Master Manipulation says, not the arsehole. She messed with the Wi-Fi and ruined the consultation that could have given your little family a lovely new addition. She ruined and delayed something that was important to your family. Call the clinic back and explain the Wi-Fi problem has been solved and you'd like another consultation. Kiva says, not the arsehole. This is grounds for a permanent ban in my opinion, especially with the my daughter comment. Lord Vericrat says, not the arsehole. Once your sister adopted Lucy to you, she stopped getting to make these decisions. She is an aunt now, not a mum, and gets to make the decisions aunts get to make, which empathetically doesn't include decisions about siblings. I'm curious about what changed between her being okay with you and your hubby having kids, and now that has gotten her acting this way, but it's ultimately immaterial. My guess is it's a weird biological thing. She may be worried that if the child is biologically your wife's, then the child will be unrelated. You get that kind of stuff from people sometimes. She's the arsehole, definitely to the point of being kicked out and you're completely 100% in the clear. Have a good day and I hope you're able to reschedule soon to get the ball rolling on a little brother or sister for Lucy. And now I turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story one. And I saw the title of, <laughs> I saw the title of this next one and I was like, oh yeah, I gotta read that. This story is from Am I Being An Asshole? Am I the arsehole for telling my partner to tone down their fucking attitude and show me some respect and gratitude? I can make a poem out of that. Before having our kid, eight weeks old, we agreed that I would be the working parent and my partner would stay at home. We made this decision for various reasons, but we were 100% in agreement before trying to conceive. And now back at work, 50% at home and 50% in the office. I work 10 hour days plus three hours total of commuting on the days I'm in the office. In the morning, I wake up, get myself ready, change the baby, dress the baby, feed the baby. I will try and get the baby to go back to sleep before starting work, but this doesn't always happen. When I work from home, I will take the baby during the day when I'm able to keep an eye on her and work simultaneously. After work, I look after the baby for one to two hours so my partner can have some time to themselves. Then we do bath time together and I give the baby her final bottle and put her to bed after which I also sleep. During the week, partner does all the night wakings and on the weekend, I handle them. I do all the house admin. I buy all the groceries and do the majority of the cooking. Laundry and dishes are split evenly. My partner handles all the other cleaning. To provide some additional context, partner recently convinced me to lend $300 to brother-in-law who hasn't paid it back and knowing him most likely won't. It won't bankrupt us, but we really could have used that money this month. I guess it has been a tough night last night. I slept in a separate room to get some solid sleep because my partner was snappy with me saying something like, just come take her and get out. I went to get the baby. So I took kiddo, do our usual routine and then started work from home. My day started with a call during which I put kiddo back in my partner's room. And once again, I got snapped at. Isn't it your job to put her back to sleep before bringing her in here? I couldn't, the baby didn't want to sleep. After my first call, I had no more planned for a couple of hours. So I took kiddo back. At around 10 a.m. I had more calls planned so I took the baby to my partner and promised that I would come back later in the afternoon so they could take a longer nap if they wanted. I then went to make a bottle to save my partner having to get out of bed. As I passed the bottle to my partner to feed the baby I got a what the hell took you so long? So I eventually snapped and said I get it you're fucking tired but this is what you signed up for when you agreed to be a stay at home parent. Am I not working my ass off to provide for this family and to help make up for the money which you wanted to give your brother? So tone down your fucking attitude and show me some more respect and gratitude. I didn't yell, but I was very stern. I also stormed out of the room and since then have just been working. Was I the asshole to respond in this way? ETA, my partner has not said anything to me since the incident and is quite clearly angry about my outburst. So I'm concerned I overstepped with my comments. Edit two, I realized I didn't include genders, but I am the mother in this situation. Partner is baby's dad. To me in this situation, it sounds like OP is doing too much and the, the chores and things ain't split equally, especially if you're having to do them during your working day. I don't think that's quite on in my opinion, but I don't know. Kids are hard fucking work. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. That's, that's all I've heard is that kids can be real hard work. So I'm probably not best place to be judging this one in my opinion. But to me, from what I've read, it sounds like 
the partner isn't pulling their fair share and they're staying in bed a lot of the day. Sure, they're tired, but they need to pull their finger out when their partner is working 10 hours a day and trying to look after a baby at the same time. You know, it sounds a bit all counterproductive and lost a bit of teamwork along the way. Let's have a look in the comments below to see what we can find. Worldly Draw says, not the arsehole, your partner needs to get a grip and get their act together and parent. It's not a 50-50 thing always. Sometimes it's 40-60 or even 20-80, depending on what the other parent has to handle that day. What if the baby is fussy and only wants your partner? Oh, sorry, baby, I'm napping. It's not my time right now. Edit, it also sounds like you do a ton with your baby, that 50% you're at home and your partner is a stay-at-home parent. If your partner is a birth mother, I'd recommend be concerned for PPD and maybe call around for some therapy for safety of themselves, yourself and the baby. I had a neighbor with PPD. She seemed fine and then one day she very nearly fatally harmed one of her children. Thank God she stopped, but she wasn't allowed near her children until she got some much needed help. OP replies to this saying, I do a lot with the baby when I'm home. I don't always mind because she is so young and I'm keen to take any chance I can get to bond and spend time with her. She's growing so quickly but I'm also very, very stressed and feeling like instead of doing one thing well, I'm just doing a crap job at everything, which I'm sure many working parents feel. Misky Moon says, not the arsehole. Honestly, I think you're doing way more than normal in my opinion. Stay at home parent needs to step it up. Now I know we've got a fair few parents on this channel, so I would love your opinions too, and just anyone's opinions really. <laughs> what do you guys think of this story? Who's in the right ear? Who's in the wrong? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story two. And our next story is from a throwaway account. Am I the arsehole for not giving my pregnant employee maternity leave? Sorry this might be long, but requires some explanation. Throw away so people don't recognize me. I own a smallish business. Our employees are full-time salaried employees and are paid once per month. We give everyone 30 days of PTO every year that can be used at any time, for any reason. It just has to be approved beforehand so that operations aren't disrupted. It never expires and accrues indefinitely at 2.5 days per month. We also give everyone what we refer to as hiatus. This is just like PTO but accrues more slowly. It's 60 days every four years accrues at 1.25 days per month. However, employees can't use this until they accrue at least 30 days. So they must wait two years at least between each hiatus. So as long as someone doesn't take any unpaid time off, they could take a month off every year and then another two months off every four years. Hiatus and PTO can be combined into three full months off if the employee chooses to do that. We do not offer maternity leave or any other type of leave. However, in practice, most people use hiatus as a form of maternity leave. We do allow employees to go into negative PTO for life and death situations if their balance is zero, but there are limits to this. We do all of this to keep things fair. I don't think people should be punished for having a baby, but I also don't think people should have to endure more work and pick up the slack for their co-workers without getting anything in return. I think the system we have is extremely generous and fair. One of our employees, Jen, is accusing us of discrimination. She's unexpectedly pregnant and wants to take time off. She has used all of her time off so far and wants to either go negative for a month or two or be given additional PTO. My answer was no, but I offered her a few months of unpaid time off. She didn't take this well and is making some dramatic statements that are causing a bit of disruption at the office. At this point, it's becoming a problem. My partner is very sympathetic and wants to be accommodating, but I'm sort of taking a hard line here, especially since this has never been a problem before. Am I the asshole? Edit, we're not bound by any government mandate to offer leave. Jen has been our employee for four years. We have 47 employees. Edit two, any employee is able to work from home as long as they work a minimum of 40 hours per week. As long as they meet their deadlines and attend all meetings, they can make their own schedules. Edit three, we offer short-term and long-term disability insurance, but it's optional. Most people choose not to take advantage of these benefits because while we cover a portion of the cost, it's still expensive, depending on the options you select. Edit four, conclusion, most people expect the owners of businesses to subsidize their decision to have children. Equal benefits for employees isn't equal at all because parents should get extra leave and special treatment as standard. If someone decides not to have children, they need to be paid less. Reading all of your comments was very interesting. Thank you. Now, you're definitely the asshole in this situation because you <laughs> because all this system does is negatively impact women who want children. You're saying that they have to hoard all this extra time that they can earn just so they can have maternity leave. And I found a comment which I think sums it up pretty well. So I'm gonna read that one straight away. 
Happen Marie says, you're the asshole. This disproportionately impacts women who want children. In your current system, men and those that are child free are free to use their generous PTO however they want. They can save it for a sort of paternity leave or other medical events. But since they don't need to undergo pregnancy, delivery and nursing, they're also free to use their PTO for vacation, personal or professional development or whatever else they want. Meanwhile, any woman planning a family needs to haul PTO if she wants a break to recover from pregnancy, delivery and any resulting complications. Say a woman and a man in their 20s work for you. The man gets to use his one to three months off traveling, seeking education, writing a book, seeking other professional opportunities, whatever. The woman on the other hand, if she wants children, must hoard it so she can have a safe pregnancy and recovery, so that she can be available for nursing, so that she can plan for any complications. Your current system allows far more opportunities for men than for women because men and women typically have different needs around pregnancy and family planning. And that is a fantastic way to put it in my opinion. And that is all there is to say on this matter in my opinion, unless you have something to say that's different. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story three. And I'm Nick Soros from A Throwaway Account. Am I the arse for flipping out because my fiance accidentally purchased my ex's car? Throwaway for obvious reasons, TLDR down the bottom. About two years ago, I, 24 female, was dating the guy, we'll call Anthony, 25 male. When I met him, it was through a mutual friend and I agreed to go on a date with him. He arrived at my house in my dream car. Let's just say it was an Aston Martin for identification purposes as he uses Reddit. Anthony and I had a beautiful relationship with a tragic and painful end caused by a miscarriage that no therapy couldn't save. Fast forward to now, I'm with an amazing man, Michael, 26 male. We both have well paying jobs, but Michael earns a significant amount of money, six digits, a year in IT slash engineering work. Two days ago, Michael told me he had a surprise for me and kept me hanging on all day and I was extremely excited. He kept telling me it was something that I've always wanted and once we got in his car, he asked me to keep a blindfold on whilst driving to our destination. When I stepped out of the car, I heard a very loud and audible, what the fuck, that sounded exactly like Anthony. When I took my blindfold off, I discovered lo and behold, my fiance had gone and bought my ex's car by accident from an online ad because he knew I always wanted this specific type of car and he thought he was doing a good thing, bless him. Except it didn't come out that kindly at first and I yelled, is this a fucking joke? I made my way back to the car and hid down as low as possible. I wanted the world to swallow me up because all I could think about was those resurfaced emotions and angst and pain I felt from seeing him again. My ex and my fiance managed to negotiate his money back, but my fiance has upset at me for the way I reacted instead of being grateful. Am I the asshole? I think part of the issue in this one comes to is that you shouted at him and said, is this a fucking joke? As soon as you got the car. So you assumed that he was playing some sort of prank on you, that he spent a huge amount of money to play a prank on you. And I'm not playing down the fact that this person had a miscarriage and seeing her ex must have been absolutely traumatic. So I can understand the running away and hiding the car, but to assume that your, your new partner is doing this out of some sort of spite or malice or something like that. And kind of afterwards, you didn't even want the car anyway because they negotiated the money back. What does it matter? You know, it might be your ex's car, but I, I personally wouldn't think of like a new car. I wouldn't think about the, the last person driving it. That just wouldn't cross my mind, especially if I was getting my dream car, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I also may be in the wrong because I imagine miscarriages can do huge mental, mental things to people. And yeah, I don't want to downplay that at the same time, you know. So let's have a look at the comments below to find some judgment. Virtual Economy says, what? Why does it even matter? I never thought about the person who owned my car before me. You're the asshole. Your fiance did something really nice for you and you reacted by cussing and hiding, then revoking the deal. Wandering Wedding says, you're the asshole. He did an amazingly sweet and generous thing. You could apologize for yelling at him and thank him for the thought. The initial shock and reaction I don't blame you for, but how you behaved afterwards is on you. Webby van der Quack says, you're the arsehole. Sorry, I really sympathize with you, but of course, it wasn't the cruelest joke of all time. You must have known that. I think your fiance has hurt that. Even for a moment, you assumed he spent thousands of dollars just to cause you pain. Elmo was a blatch says, info, you said it was an accident on his part and it seems like your ex didn't know about it either. So whether you are the arsehole depends entirely whether you were or are blaming your fiance for making you relive a trauma. 
You aren't the arse for having a visceral reaction to an incredible painful surprise. But if you haven't fully explained and conveyed to your fiance that you appreciate such a sweet gesture, that you wish it hadn't gone down that way, then maybe you are the arsehole. But if you have done that and he's still mad, that's on him. Now, I'm going to turn it to you guys once again. What do you guys think of the story? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story four. Once again, guys, as always, thank you for being here today. I hope you did enjoy today's stories. And if you did, you know what to do. Hit that like, that subscribe, and maybe that notification bell too. And maybe even consider joining the channel either through YouTube membership below or heading on over to Patreon, all in the description below. And just a huge thank you for taking the time out of your day to come and watch me. That means the world to me. Thank you so, so much. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love.